My name is Dr Rebecca Hobbs, I'm the Senior Reproductive Biologist working at Taronga's Reproduction and Resilience Centre at Taronga Western Plains Zoo. As a zoo based reproductive biologist, I work with the collection animals that we have on site in collaboration with our animal managers, but I also do conservation work outside of the zoo with other industry professionals and also conservation professionals. So my job is quite varied and it can vary day to day and week to week. So obviously working in reproduction, there are some animals that breed all year round and there are some animals that only breed at specific times of year. So that means that I'll be working on different animals throughout the year. Some of the programs that we regularly work on are with the black rhinoceros breeding program that species breeds all year round and we monitor their ovarian cycles to be able to figure out when they're ovulating and when the best time for mating might be. For some of the animals that we have here, it's, it can be more difficult to determine when they're ovulating and certainly you can't get access to do, say, an ultrasound to determine if they're pregnant or not. So for us here at the zoo, it's important to know these things to be able to manage those an animals adequately through nutrition, but also through social management with different animals. So we can work in collaboration with the animal care staff and provide them with extra information on top of what they might already be observing with the animals that they take care of. I was interested in moving into this field because I felt that I wanted to help with some aspect of conservation and I'm particularly interested in the biology of animals and obviously more specifically the reproductive biology of animals. And being able to contribute to some of those larger pro programs and to see how much effort and planning goes into trying to manage these animals and sustain these animals both in a zoo and in wild populations it does um, just give you an amazing feeling to be a part of that process and certainly I'm privy to some information I suppose on the first one sometimes that knows when an animal might be pregnant or not and it's it's really exciting to be able to tell that to other staff members and and sort of gauge their excitement and yeah it's it's enjoyable so our lab is a little bit different perhaps to a veterinary pathology clinic or to human hospitals where you might get monitored for um, ovarian cycles or, or just hormones, circulating hormones in general. You can take a blood sample from pets, you can take a, a blood sample pretty easily from humans as well. We can't always access um, our zoo animals to take samples blood samples on a regular basis. So we actually do uh, non-invasive hormone monitoring and what that involves is collecting waste products. So we're talking about urine, feces. On occasion we do have animals that you can regularly draw blood from um, but mostly it's going to be through the byproducts of hormone degradation that we can measure in feces and urine. So there is some processing involved in that, which is not particularly glamorous, which is baking, if it's feces, baking those samples in an oven, drying them, and then extracting the hormones and analyzing them on what we call an enzyme immunoassay. So I work um, alongside other university partners as well as conservation professionals um, in the conservation field uh, with wild animals. Sometimes that is still based in the laboratory at Taronga Western Plains Zoo, but sometimes that does also involve me going into the field to do um, experiments or collections. And one of those programs is um, Taronga's long-running uh, coral recovery project, uh, which has been ongoing since 2011. So we're coming up to 10 years of that program. So as part of that, it's a, it's a collaborative team and it always has been um, with some external collaborators from Australia and Hawaii at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute and Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. And that entails our team going up to Townsville to the Australian Institute of Marine Science. And we only do that around spawning. What we're aiming to do is to collect and cryopreserve sperm samples from 
a diversity of different species of hard corals, those that are responsible for building structure to coral reefs. So we can only collect that once, maybe two times per year um, in the early summer. So my involvement in that is not only being on the ground for those field hours, but to also organise a lot of the logistics surrounding getting people and equipment there from Hawaii and Australia, and also bringing those samples all the way back to our cryodiversity bank so that they can be properly archived for the point in time that we might want to access those samples for conservation purposes. In Taronga's cryodiversity bank, we actually have the largest collection of frozen sperm in the world for coral. Um, and these are living cells, not just DNA. So that encompasses 26 species at the moment, which we're hoping to expand. And we have up to about 30 individual colonies represented for some of those species, but some of those species we've only just um, invest, started investigating and only have a couple of individuals represented. Part of my job also involves learning more about the biology of species and their natural history, how they reproduce, and that impacts the way that we might uh, develop our management um, protocols or processes, both for trying to maintain animals in a zoo setting, but also to ensure persistence of species in the wild. And it's important that the work that we do contributes to an informed and science evidence-based management process um, to conservation.